Okay, he has a you know scouting report on Liberty for you. Just uh, the quarterback and wide receiver that they have are NFL players. I mean, the quarterback has a big time arm, Calvert. We played against him last year. Uh, exceptional player, really good size, makes really good decisions, uh, and, and he will be an NFL quarterback. And then the receiver, the big tall receiver that goes along with him. So those two guys are really hard to stop, and that's kind of the heart of their offense. Uh, they make a lot of plays. Where they have really excelled is defensively. Uh, it's really the same players that we've played against, but it is a totally different defense. You know, they're really buying into the new coaching staff, and they do not play anything like what they did before. And they are physical. Uh, they are playing fast. Uh, they're giving up 22 points a game. Uh, you know, New Mexico scored 55 on us, could only score 10 on Liberty, and, and they didn't score the last touchdown until about 30 seconds left in the game. So this is an exceptional defensive football team. They really run really well. Uh, they mix things up really well. They're really well coached, and um, it'll be a real challenge for our offense to, to go play against these guys and get points. Um, I told our team, you know, this is for the 2019 team. This is really a defining week for us and a defining game, you know, in terms of, you know, how we're going to approach the rest of this season. Obviously, we played a tough schedule, and we all know that. It's been the toughest schedule in a group of five, without a doubt. Um, but there's certainly opportunities ahead for us, and that's going to, what's in your heart is going to get exposed from here on out through the rest of this season. And so that's a challenge for our guys to find out what you really have inside of you and can you rebound and go out and prepare really well this week. And we prepared really well last week. Um, I firmly believe if we turn the ball over once or less, we can score on anybody and beat anybody. So that's the issue with us. Are we going to do that and are we going to prepare the right way? And if we do that and uh, What's in our heart will get exposed, and I think it'll be something that we really are proud of. And because I know these kids got the right thing inside of them, we just got to go do it on a Saturday. Any questions? Coach, what impressed you the most about your defense last week? Well, just the rebound. You know, from a you know tough game at uh, UNM, and then to come back and play as physical as we did, Adam. I thought we played really well against the run. We didn't give up the deep ball, which was what had hurt us at UNM. Um, I just thought our guys played with a lot more urgency, uh, played more physical than what we had, and, and played like we need them to play you know, to give us a chance to win. They kept us in that game uh, against a really good Fresno team. Fresno's, you know, probably end up being a 10-win team again. Uh, but uh, we were right there with them, and had we not turned the ball over, that game would go down to the wire. Do you, do you think that teams are going to continue to? Um, take away shallow stuff, not let you guys throw down, throw the ball down the field like a Fresno State did, and you said Liberty's different defensively. Like it seems like until you start getting that deep, that those balls down the field or running the football, I don't know if they're going to give up those short passes. Well, we're running the ball really well right now. I mean, they, they, that that really has not been a problem. The only problem we've had offensively, Jason, is the turnovers. I mean, you look the one game that we only turned the ball over once, we scored 52 points. And we're moving the ball in every other game, but we're not able to finish drives and get it in the end zone because of the turnover. So, uh, you know, people are going to people play you different from week to week, depending on how it goes. You know, Fresno started trying to drop everybody into coverage, and then when we started running the ball, they instantly went back to their base defense for the rest of the game. So we didn't see that much later uh, until the last drive or two, where they had the lead and just weren't going to give us any passing game. So. Uh, it's more about us just taking care of the football. If we take care of the ball, it, it's really a simple game. If we take care of the ball, we're going to score points. You talked about third down. How would you say the season on first down you, you play? On first, we've been really good on first down. Yeah, we've been very, very good, actually. So maybe the biggest difference between Liberty from last year and this year with you freeze is that, Coach? What is the biggest difference? Yeah, I think it's the defense. I think it's the way they're playing defensive football. You look at they held Syracuse to 24 points. It was a 24 to nothing game. Uh, Buffalo couldn't score on them. New Mexico couldn't score on them. Uh, you know, they, they've just been really an exceptional defensive football team. And again, it's a lot of the same guys, most of the same guys that we played against before. But you can tell the mentality is different. Uh, the scheme is not all that much different, but it's the mentality that they're playing with. They're playing with a lot of confidence. They're coming in here on a three-game winning streak. And uh, you know, I think the defense is definitely the, the difference for them. What's your plan to crack that defense? We just just take care of the football. Like I said, you know, uh, when we do that, we are pretty much unstoppable. 
and uh, we, we have moved the ball on everybody we've played this year, uh, even Washington State and some on Alabama. But uh, the turnovers just keep negating all the good things that we do. So if we only turn the ball over once in a game, we're going to score a lot of points. We're going to have a chance to win any game that we do that in. The, the Liberty UNM game, UNM must have played better on defense uh, last week, too, because Liberty only got 17 points. How are they able to do that? Yeah, I think uh, you know UNM's got a pretty good defensive football team. They got speed. We were able just to formate them into some looks. We know them really well, and we were able to do some things, Jack. I think that other teams haven't done against them. Um, Liberty tried some of that, but just wasn't as successful doing it. Um, so you know, Liberty is is dangerous because of the quarterback. You know, he really can make every throw that you need to make, and he's mobile. He can run around a little bit too. So. Uh, you know, he, he's a problem. And the, the big wide receiver is, is certainly a problem. And like I say, both those guys are NFL players. You talked about turnovers on offense. Your, can you talk about the, your defense has forced one turnover in each of the last three games? So they're starting to at least give you guys the ball. Yeah, we need to get turnovers going. You know, I went back and looked, and uh, most every year, with the exception of last year, you know, our defense has caused 20 plus turnovers in a season. So we're well behind that mark right now. Uh, you know, and, and we need to obviously eliminate our turnovers, but we need our defense to help us. You know, they got us a turnover to start the second half there Saturday, and it was instant touchdown. And that's how you become a good scoring offense too. When you get some short fields, you know, when you have to go 80 yards to score every time, it's it's much more difficult to get points on the board than it is when you get some of those short fields. Do you change anything that you do defensively for this receiver? I mean. You had a good game in the game here last year against you guys. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you, you have to know where he is. And there's got to be times, you know, according to what your defense is and down in distance and maybe field position where you're going to double him and take him away and make them throw it somewhere else. There's, there's certainly those type of things. You want to try not to get him matched up on a bad matchup, uh, you know, in man coverage and things like that. So, yeah, he's, he's certainly somebody you have, to, you have to have a plan for. I understand that there's probably some differences in, this, in the schemes a little bit. Does it just help having played this team twice um, a year ago in terms of familiarity? Well, personnel-wise, you know, we know their personnel pretty well. But scheme-wise, there are really uh, a lot of differences now. So it's not as much help in that vein. Yeah. Coach, I know we asked you this last time. Last year, whenever you played Liberty for the first time, do you handle the first game against them any different knowing you're going to play them again? No, the first game, you just it's just like playing anybody else. You try to go whatever you got to do to win the football game. The second game, because you have played them, you've got more tendencies and things like that. You've got to be more attuned to, to what you're doing there as far as the strategy and the, maybe the scheme that you're using. But this game is just, uh, just go try to win it. Any questions for Coach Martin? Um, are there any injuries, Coach? Any injury, injury wise? Uh, I think we're getting Jalen Guerrero back, so that'll help. You know, we we've been down four offensive tackles uh, for really for the whole season. Uh, Jalen went out the New Mexico game, so we we'll get him back. That will help us some. Robert Downs is back, wide receiver. He didn't play last game uh, with a rolled ankle, uh, so we do have those two guys back. And we didn't not we didn't have any injuries coming out of the Fresno game. I wanted to ask you if you had any thoughts on the legislation in California, folks being able to use their likeness for endorsements in this. Time. Man, how, how long do you have? Are they going? Are they going to pay sports writers? <laughs> Here, here's what I would say: a couple of things. Uh, one, I hate that we are devaluing. Uh, we're devaluing education. You know, I don't know about you, but I've got a daughter-in-law who's a nurse, and she's got a lot of student loans that she's got to pay back. So I think it's very arrogant of people to say that somebody that's on scholarship is not getting rewarded. You're getting a free education. That education is going to last you your whole life if you do what you should do and graduate. You're not going to have any school debt. You know, my son was a college baseball player. He was on scholarship. He has zero college debt. I was on scholarship at the University of Kentucky. When I came out of there, I had zero college debt. Most people don't get to say that. You know, and, and I think the arrogance of just overlooking that as a reward is wrong. I do think that there's a lot of things that we could do for uh, student athletes to give them more opportunities and more money. I don't think this is the right way to do it. Um, in my opinion, this is going to destroy college athletics. States like New Mexico, you're not going to have college athletics. 
only the power conference schools will be able to survive this, in my opinion, because they're going to have the money to do it. So you're going to end up with these super elite power conferences, the Alabamas and the Auburns of the world, and nobody else is going to be able to sustain what they're talking about doing. Uh, so I, th I think there's not been very much thought put in that. I think on the other side of this thing that nobody has thought about, you're, you're basically making this professional sports. Okay, so what's going to happen from the college coach's perspective is there's no, there's no longer going to be guaranteed scholarships. If we're going to pay athletes like that, then you have to be able to cut them if they're not playing well. That's, that's already on the table coming from the – Coaches Association, and that's what's going to happen. That's what happens in the NFL, right? If they don't play well, they're being paid, then they get cut. Well, that's what's going to happen in college football in particular, too. I mean, you can just see that coming down the road. How are the student athletes going to pay the taxes on all that money that they're getting? There's another issue. Title IX, are you going to pay the female athletes the same as you're paying those male athletes? So there, there's a lot of discrepancies there. I think it's opened up a Pandora's box that they're going to be sorry that they went that way. And again, I do think that college athletes should get more than what they're getting, okay? But I think there's a much better way to do it uh, than what this does.